What are we looking at here? Sorghum, yep. Uh, nice, tall sorghum. So I really like sorghum sedan grass, um, especially on farms with large tractors. Uh, this is a huge plant. It makes biomass like no other plant. Okay? It's a huge root system, especially if you mow it once. And it has a huge amount of green matter. Um, the key with this particular cover crop is being able to um, get it down and incorporate it, right? You know, this, this is not an easy thing to deal with. But I really like this crop. We don't tend to see it as much with garlic growing as we do in some of the other rotations for vegetable farms. But this is something that I am very interested in looking at in the future. Is anybody using these circums again in their garlic rotation? Yeah. Because of the I don't use it before the garlic, but I use it after the garlic, and then sometimes within that four-year rotation, depending on what other crop I have. But what it, the way I like to use it also is I get it up so that it's about four or five feet tall, then I chop it down to about a foot, and that will allow it to <coughs> kill it and really go down and um, you know break up that, that hard pan. That's number one, but there's also, it's, it's a little package, so you can, uh, there's a circle of that that's chemical inside that, you know, will uh, uh, release and uh, be incorporated, and uh, it kills meat as well. Not only can it smother it, because of all the biomass, but it's always where to take the garlic out. I like to do it then, and then, depending, sometimes in that period of your get it on something. I love it. I think it's a great crop. Yeah. To give you perspective, in that um, in that table that you have, you can see the pounds of dry matter generated by each of these cover crops, and the amount for sorghum sand grass is eight to ten thousand pounds dry matter per acre. So that's a buffer. That doesn't even count what happens below ground. Huge crop. Very cool. Um, we'll see that variety matters a lot depending on what you're trying to do with it. Um, you know, the, the wheat suppressing chemicals that sorghum sand grass creates, I think, are present in all of these sort of scan grasses. But the products that break down into cyanide, which we use for biocommunication, are not. Um, especially if you're using some of the ones that are for grazing, um, those have been bred to not have those compounds on account of not wanting to feed cows cyanide. Go figure. So we'll talk about that in just a second. Yeah. Oh, um, this sedan grass, can you mow it periodically? Does it grow? Do you down the road or run into the level? So the yeah. question is, can you mow it periodically? Yes. Everybody yeah, I know. Can, yeah. yeah. Yes. That's yep. Every it won't kill it. No. Mow it three times before season. Yep. Yeah. 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 Do it here. You know, they let it get waist high and then go to knee high, and then other growers that let it get knee high and chop it down to ankle high. Yeah. 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 If you were to do that by, uh, say, grazing cattle on it, would it, I mean, would that also be beneficial? It would still come back? Yeah, yeah. You can graze cattle on this and it will regrow. Okay. Yep, absolutely. They're not going to be quite as um, uniform in their mowing pattern, yeah. okay, no. Right, yeah, I mean, you're going to have to think about your, your uh, stocking density and all that fun cattle stuff. You want to bring it down, but yeah, that would definitely work. And then you'd have the added benefit of manure right on that field, so that would be fantastic. Okay, so very briefly, um, beyond any of these issues, we talked about the idea that you want your garlic to have the best soil possible, right? Um, one of the, the key things that we keep coming back to in these discussions about garlic is that, that having a, a good seed is important, but you can put a good seed in bad soil and you will not get a good crop, right? So soil is really the key to growing good garlic. So that's where, you know, sacrificing some of your land to really put in cover crops and improve the soil is something that we're seeing more and more of our growers do, especially growers with soil that needs remediation. So it's been a tough decision in some cases, but we're finding that, that our growers absolutely think that that's worth their time. So I don't know if any of you have done that. Um, most of you probably have growing garlic for a while now. So maybe you've already gotten past this point. But in our area, we seem to have a ton of new growers who tried to grow garlic in marginal land and had to step back and improve their land with cover crops. And I think we've really talked about most of the cover crops 
that I would use for soil building. The exception is the mustards and radishes, which I just wanted to touch on. Um, not necessarily for soil building so much, but as for breaking plow pan layers um, specifically. Anybody using mustards? Yeah. I, I like mustards. You know, any mustard crop can go through the plow pan layer, right? Tillage radishes are cool because, you know, they make this huge radish and you can see what they're doing. But even normal mustards will penetrate that plow pan layer, right? They'll put tiny holes through it. So I like them a lot as something in the rotation. Um, I know that we ran into issues with bulb mite and um, garlic this year. Did anybody else hear about that? Was that just an isolated incident? Yeah, this is another thing that's on our radar. We're trying to figure out what the heck happened, and we'll let you guys know when we figure it out. But so far, it seems to be isolated, which is good. Very briefly, um, we've talked about this a little bit in the past, but um, there are two biophilic cover crops that are recommended for garlic, right? We've got hot mustards, and we've got a specific variety of sorghum sudan grass called Trudam 8, which is really hard to get a hold of organically, FYI. I still haven't found an organic source. But um, there are quite a few manufacturers out of Texas, so I'm thinking that maybe somebody down there will have this. Um, the biophilic mustards, are going to be used um, generally in the heat of the summer for seeding garlic is what we've been looking at. Um, the varieties that so far we've been looking at were Caliente Pacific Gold Kodiak, the hottest mustard. And if you're using a mustard for biofumigation, you have to realize that you can't just plant it and assume that the soil is biofumigated, right? You actually have to incorporate small bits of the cover crop into the soil Ideally, you want to seal the soil by rolling it, and then you want very quick breakdown so that the compounds that are in that cover crop are released into the soil and humiliate the soil, right? So it's a very active process. If you're going to do this, you have to intensively manage the soil. <coughs> so just bear that in mind that you know, this is something that will take a lot of work. Um, most of the effectiveness that we've seen with this is actually with Phytophthora, which is another soil barn, soil born issue, um, not with nematode because we haven't been able to create a situation where, where we were able to do this. So just so you know, this is kind of in the realm of theory because we can't catch the nematodes to do this work on them. Um, same thing with tree and eight. We haven't been able to actually make this work with garlic loaf nematode, but we know that it works for other nematodes. Trudam 8 also has to be chopped up quite small, incorporated, and ideally the soil is sealed. And then when it breaks down, it releases um, basically it goes to a cyanide compound. And nematodes are very um, susceptible to cyanide compounds. So that's what we've killed with, which I love thinking about. But we haven't actually been able to accomplish this in real life. So that's another, that's another one of those theoretical ideas. Okay, I'm going to stop, George, so that you can actually get going. Um, I think I can, can I hold any remaining questions until lunch so that we can get through the soil home? Okay, I'm going to do that.